Uh, we are about to broadcast live an interview of the uh, Gnostic Illuminati um, self-described Grandmaster Alexander Romanov uh, that we took two weeks ago and it will be preceded or followed by an eight-minute summary of previous work. Uh, but it contains some very interesting information, and I do recommend that you listen to this guy. He's not just some flake off the internet, okay? who are throughout the Western uh, intelligence agencies, military, and this is not the Italian Illuminati, this is the Gnostic Illuminati, uh, and they want meritocracy, ruled by the people who are the best, people who work their way up the system, not people who are born into it and given it, have it given to them even though they are often not very bright. That is not a good way to have a, a planet run. They want a transparent pyramid that anybody can climb to the top and everybody can see how they got there and why they got there. We don't want hidden people using secret societies, murder, bribery and lies to rule us for selfish purposes. Those days are over. Yeah, just one, one last thing and this is a little bit uh, different. It concerns the, the secret of the Illuminati. and. The only other time I've been on video was with Benjamin, and what I said was that the great secret the Illuminati are keeping is that uh, the Abrahamic God is in fact Satan, which is of course absolutely true. I mean, but we have known this for thousands of years, ever since the ancient Gnostics, that the God of the, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims is none other than the devil. However, the real secret for 14,000 years that the Illuminati have kept, protected, is evidence which incontrovertibly proves 
the existence of a technologically advanced pre-flood civilization. I'm talking about Atlantis. They were on par with our own technology. And this has been totally erased from our history. And why has this happened? Well, well obviously, so they, can, so they can insert this, this devil and, and in, 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 in that way, brainwash and control the human race, which, have, which they have done exceedingly well. But we have, we have preserved these secrets, and we have the evidence, and we will present the evidence which proves the existence of Atlantis. Well, they've had their chance to surrender, and it's, it looks like they're not going to take it, so we're going to force them to surrender. And just, just finally, I have a message. Where am I speaking? Over there. And this is to Queen Elizabeth directly. Um, Aunt Elizabeth, Isis is very upset. She wants her crown back. Uh, hello, I'm Benjamin Fulford, uh, speaking in Tokyo on April 24th, 2012. Today, I'm going to function as a journalist, and I'm going to interview a gentleman who has called himself by various names over the years I've known him, uh, Richard Sorge, the name he used the name of a famous Russian spy in Japan during World War II, uh, Flasha uh, Zarek uh, is another name he's used. Now he calls himself Alexander Romanov. Um, now, I know that I, for when you approached me, you came to me and you said that you had 70 kilograms of marijuana and that if uh, you did not, I did not introduce the Yakuza, um, I would be killed. And so, Right away, I knew from that that this is not just some random guy, you know, uh, coming to me. And uh, I'd like to know, who told you to come to me with 70 kilos of um, dangerously narcotic-laced uh, marijuana? 
we both know, Benjamin, that that is not the true story. <coughs> However, the, the, the case of the 70 kilograms of marijuana is true. Um, no one told me to come and threaten you or anything like that. Uh, that situation just evolved. Um, <coughs> I used to be, before all these crazy things started happening, I used to be, I shouldn't really talk about this, but I used to be in the smuggling business. <coughs> and through that business, I got to know various underground kind of people who were connected to various intelligence agencies. MI6, CIA, Mossad, uh, Freemasons, you name it. So, <coughs> That happened uh, pretty much at the same time that I was approached by the Gnostic Illuminati. Uh -huh. And you approached me just after I had made a speech in front of the Yamaguchi Gumi, the world's largest crime gang headquarters, uh, in a desperate attempt at the time to prevent them from killing me because they had tried uh, several times and were getting closer and closer. Uh, and See, was that many people want to kill you? Doesn't it? Oh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore, fortunately. But at the time, yes. Mm. And right after that, you mm. came to me. So, you told me that you were called to Thailand, and you met someone from the Special Air Service there. First of all, uh, I did not approach you. We were introduced by a mutual friend, who I later found out turned out to be a junior member of the Gnostic Illuminati. So it was just a, I, I, I wasn't aware of anything. I didn't even know who you were. Uh -huh. And on top of that, I didn't have any interest whatsoever in c any conspiracy theories. And in the time that I, that I had known you, until all these really strange things started happening, um, to tell the truth, I just thought you were another crazy person, obsessed with these crazy conspiracies, until... Yeah, and I, I, I would like to point out that there's been a systematic campaign to, pr to uh, say that I'm a drug-crazed, former journalist who uh, lost it somewhere and and not only that they actually tried to get me to take various drugs um, but anyway I understand from all that they've done to me and you that there's some very seriously dangerous people who uh, feel threatened by what we're doing well for one there is definitely a smear campaign there's absolutely no doubt about that directed towards me as well as towards you um, as far as dangerous people go, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know, do you want me to go into this or well, look, specific let, questions? Or? Well, look, I mean, how many murder attempts have you survived? Two that I know of. Okay, uh, six that I know of, all right? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of people we're dealing with. And, and uh, you know, the police authorities have been told about all this stuff. And they've been told about the 70 kilos too, of course. Uh, also, I'd like you to know that one of my colleagues uh, was on the phone with Tony Blair, who was bragging that they're going to put me in jail and you in jail on drug charges. That was a trap for both of us. If they could um, kill us or put us in jail, we would have been dead a long time ago. Yes. Sim simple as that. The simple fact is that they can't because we are protected at the very highest possible level. This because we are a, a serious danger and threat to these uh, evil Kabbalists yeah. running the planet. <clears throat> yeah, in, in your case, it's the Gnostic Illuminati. In my case, the first people who came to offering protection were the, uh, the red and the blue, or what's known in the West as the triads. And they're not necessarily equal to Chinese mafia or Chinese gangsters. They're not the same. It's more like the Chamber of Commerce, which has in their Rolodex people who offer specialized services, some of which may be falling into a gray zone, but they themselves are not a criminal organization. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the other thing I want to ask, because uh, this is quite different from how I think, you put out a book with the title 666, and you've sometimes referred to yourself as the Antichrist. Now, a lot of people out there uh, find this disturbing and take it in very negative terms. So tell me, why, why would you choose such a provocative title for your book, and why do you call yourself the Antichrist? I guess I must just be an a evil, despicable person. <laughs> why else? <laughs> um, well, you see, anyone who knows anything about all these conspiracies and uh, evil cabals and all that will know that the official Illuminati uh, communication is a website called Yamageddon Conspiracy. 
Anyone can look that up, this up. I urge you to do so. It can be found at www.armageddonconspiracy.co.uk. Now, this website is uh, quite simply. Um, uh, see, this is the part I have to cut out. I can't do it properly. All right. <coughs> what, what it is, it's the most uh, comprehensive body of, of knowledge, both mainstream and esoteric, on the planet, including uh, historical, philosophical, psychological, religious, scientific, mathematical. It's, it's just an astounding uh, body of, of knowledge. Okay. Uh, and, but it, it has one drawback. And, and that drawback is that it's simply way too large. It's, it's well over two million uh, words. And this, let's not forget, is the official communication page of the real Illuminati. So forget about all these conspiracy theorists who talk about, okay. you know, who are they, Jones and uh, well, well, your friends. They, they, they don't have a clue about who the real Illuminati are. What they need to do is have a look at this website, right? I've already given information for that. Yep. Now, now, if I can just uh, finish. Uh, because this is such a large amount of, of information and knowledge, it would literally take someone uh, months to finish reading through all this. And so, when all this stuff started happening about uh, two years ago, the author of this website asked me, requested, that I provide... Uh, a smaller, is more easily readable version of the Armageddon Conspiracy website. And that is, and that is what turned out to be the book, 666. Why is it called 666? Because I mean, that's supposed to be the, the number of uh, Satan or something. Well, well, that depends on who you listen to. I mean, we say a lot of things that, uh, you know... You, you believe that the God, the Abrahamic God in the Bible is actually Satan, is yes. that right? It's not a question of belief, it's a question of knowledge. I mean, we have evidence and proof to prove this. And you wish to overthrow this God? Uh, yeah, well, we are all gods. We have been enslaved by this belief in these uh, false and fake religions. And just to finish, as to the why 666, no particular reason, except that the book 666, which, by the way, hasn't been published yet because there is uh, currently some dispute going on about the the legal ramifications, but to be perfectly honest, such a book would not be published by an English publisher because it is so controversial. I mean, if it was to be published, there would be a revolution tomorrow, basically. Yeah. Well, um, but just to finish, um, the reason it's titled 66 is because it has 10 chapters and each of the chapters is precisely 666 kilobytes. Okay, was that by design or? By accident. By accident, mm. okay. Um, yeah, no, I understand that when the Emperor Constantine created uh, Roman Catholic Christianity, they started a long period of suppressing all other ancient bodies of knowledge in Western civilization. And I take it your group was trying to keep that knowledge from being extinguished. Is that a, a short version of what's been happening? That is pretty much correct. We have preserved this esoteric knowledge, which goes back to the time of Atlantis. And we can prove this. And when this proof comes out, it will become blatantly obvious that the, that the Earth wasn't created in 4004 BC by some almighty god. <coughs> well, and that the whole thing is, is a great big fraud and a fake just to enslave the human race. Well, certainly in Asia, uh, where they don't have uh, people, you know, following a book, uh, telling them how to live, this is not uh, an alien way of thinking. But um, I want to get back to this organization and the seeming power it has, because another thing you did that made me realize you're not just some guy, uh, some flake, is that you went to the Japanese police before the tsunami attack on um, March 11th, 2011, and you told them that Japan was about to be hit with nuclear terrorism. Why did you do that? Where, where was the, what was the source of your information? Well, because these, uh, this 70 kilograms of marijuana that you keep bringing up, um, I was introduced, you see, through a colleague that I used to work with, through another, to another group who was based in Taiwan. <coughs> And I went to meet these people, they seemed nice enough. I found out, I mean, you know, you have to understand, in this business, I mean, you know, these, these are heavy duty, hardcore people, usually ex-military, SAS of, of the sort, 
with uh, intelligence connections. Uh -huh. um, and that's how they do this stuff, because they have connections. You know, you can't, an ordinary person off the street couldn't, couldn't do this kind of work. Yeah. But anyway, when, when, when uh, this so-called opportunity was presented to me, and that's how you became involved, I went to meet these people, they seemed nice enough. And they took me, blindfolded, in a car, standard procedure, to the place where they were keeping this stuff, the 70 kilograms of stuff. And I still can't understand, to be perfectly honest, why all this happened. But while I was there, um, I saw a cruise missile. And these people told me that this was one of the cruise missiles that was taken from the Russian submarine Kursk. Now, agreed, this could all have been some kind okay. of elaborate... Uh, however, I will point out that uh, a couple of years before I met you, uh, Mr. Paul Lane from the Pentagon Military Intelligence told me that four nuclear-tip warheads were stolen from the uh, Russian submarine Kursk. So I can confirm from an independent source what you just told me. That is also my information. I saw this thing with my own eyes. And what I did was I reported the incident and the general area. I didn't know the exact area, but I knew the general area. To the Japanese police, I tried to tell as many people as I could, including yourself. Uh -huh. I believe you reported in the news. And I also went to the Australian Embassy in Tokyo and, and I, thought, I thought this information was very important. And so I, I passed it to the Australian Embassy, asked that it be given to the uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Kevin Rudd, and I promptly left the country because I didn't think it was safe for me to be here. Um, two days after this incident, where I gave this information to the Australian Embassy, um, the, the Prime Minister was just was inexplicably fired. Mm -hmm. And when you told me that a, the nuclear missile had been smuggled into uh, a property owned by former Prime Minister Yasuhiro Nakasone in western that. Tokyo, we, we traced it to the uh, basement. It was then transported to the basement of the North Korean Citizens Association in Japan. And it was then transferred to the deep sea drilling ship, the Chikyu Maru, uh, which was drilling, ten, it can drill 10 kilometers into the seabed, uh, and it was drilling off the shore of uh, Japan before the tsunami. And we have one of the uh, ship, uh, one of the crew members who was involved in placing the nuclear weapons on the uh, seafloor in our protective custody, and he has given us a full explanation of what's happened. Now, let's not go up back to 311 too much because that's already over. Rather, you're now telling me that the next target for nuclear terrorism is going to be London. And I'd like to know why you're saying that. <coughs> well, on, on just that you mentioned 311 on March 11th, two hitmen were sent to kill me on that date. At that time, I was in the Philippines. Two assassins. I was warned, of course, I escaped. But, but they, they planned to kill me on exactly the same date. Now. I have... Yeah, actually, I'll tell you something, too. Just on March 10th, the day before, mm. the daughter of the former number two man in the Yamaguchi Gumi Crime Syndicate uh, insisted that I go meet this person who uh, tried to poison me. And I think it was designed so that I would also die on 311. Um, but that's another story. Except that, yeah, you know, we, we're, we, you know uh, I'm just a journalist mm. who followed the investigative trail until I discovered some very dangerous people and entered into that nexus of secret societies, uh, government spy agencies, mm. mafias and gangsters, and, and you learn about this whole world of murder and violence and secrecy, uh, and you get involved and it's hard to get out, you know? It's impossible to get out. The, but thing, it, the thing is that I actually know the name of the person who was involved in this smuggling operation. Um, and it's a MI6 agent who is, who's living in the Philippines. Peter Stevens is his name. He was, he, he was the ex uh, uh, chief of Hong Superintendent, Kong. Superintendent, I think, of the Hong Kong police. You know? And when Hong Kong reverted back to China, he moved to the Philippines. And from there, from there continued his spying operation. Okay. Now, let I, have, I have reported this to MI6 as well as to other... Yeah, um, okay, but what we're trying to do now is to prevent the murder of innocent people in London or wherever they're going to set off their next weapon. That is obviously their plan. I mean, all the science points to it. A anyone who knows anything about these things, um, it's plain and obvious. that They, they present it in, in movies, in cards. The attack is going to take place against London during the Olympics. 
Uh, and no, one's it, gonna, no one wants to do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, and, and on the Rockefeller Institute uh, homepage, there's a document which is written in past tense, talking about uh, how London was attacked by yes. terrorism in 2012, and 13,000 people were killed. There are many of these signs, not just one, but yes, I've seen this uh, document as well. Um, so, now, we both are part of... A organizations that are dedicated to overthrowing uh, these criminals and I think we have a rough agreement on who they are but who, who do you think is that we have to uh, remove from power in order to prevent this kind of war and, and mass murder? Well it's, it's the group known as the Old World Order, the roughly 6,000 individuals, um, mostly old men, average age 60, but he, even within that, there's a, as you say, the Committee of 300, um, and, and these people have ruled our planet for, for forever, and it's time we got rid of them, but unfortunately they don't want to go. So what we are going to do, uh, as, as I mentioned the last time, is we are offering a $1 million bounty in gold for the public execution of a mass murderer and war criminal. Actually, that, that, that applies to all of them, but we, we're going to start with George W. Bush, Jr., Okay, so you, you're saying that there's a million dollar gold bounty uh, on George Bush Jr.'s head. Yes. Okay, now this is not uh, White Dragon Society no. policy. This is Gnostic Illuminati. What the White Dragon Society is proposing is to start multiple legal cases against the pharmaceutical and chemical companies that are putting... Uh, spreading disease and putting sterilizing chemicals in ordinary household products as a part of an illegal uh, campaign to reduce population. Because here we have a legal way uh, to arrest these people and the investigative trail will lead to the Committee of 300, the Club of Rome, and to this group of old men. Yes, but these people control the courts. And time is running out. It's 2012. I mean, if, if, if there isn't going to be a revolution this year, then... It never will. So I think we have to take matters into our own hands and fight fire with fire, basically, because that, that is what these people do. They, they use violence and force on the, rest of, on the rest of us, and now it's time we turn the tables and start using it on them. Uh, and it is true that a murder and self-defense is legal. Well, it all depends on the morali morality, doesn't it? Yes, but I mean, if, if they're going to kill... Uh, billions of people, which they've announced in multiple uh, documents, and we have a countless amount of insiders mm -hmm. telling us this. And in fact, I was invited to join their ranks, mm -hmm. and they told me, I have a tape recording of it, uh, where they're saying they have to kill four to five billion people through disease and starvation and war. Well, we are at war. Make no mistake about that. This is a war. Yeah, and, and, and I do believe that the Asian secret societies also need to realize that it's not just enough to stop buying their government bonds, okay? We have to remove these people from positions of power, and I advocate putting them in jail. Mm -hmm. Your group is taking a more radical stance where you're actually talking about an active assassination campaign. Well, so long as we get the job done, it doesn't really matter how we do it. But, it, it, you know, we can work together on this. Because the goal is the same, to remove these parasites. And I would like to ask for the patriotic and intelligent people in the militaries of the West to take action before a more radical, anarchistic type of chaos erupts. A surgical pinpoint series of arrests is all that would it take to prevent billions of deaths. We know who they are, we know where they are, why aren't they in jail? Do you have any other questions? Yes. Um, why do you call yourself Alexander Romanov? Because I am. You're, you claim to be the heir to the Russian throne, is that right? I'm the, the oldest grandson of Anastasia Romanov great-grandson of Tsar, Tsar Nicholas Romanov, which would make me, unfortunately I'm not, Mr. Putin is the, the Tsar of Russia at the moment, but uh, it would make me the rightful heir to the Russian throne, yes. Okay. 
And when you first came to me, you said you were a KGB MI6 agent. I, I, I did nothing of the sort. Well, you, you did drop those names. All right, all right. Well, maybe you're not supposed to say this in public. I don't know. But, uh, I'm not a KGB agent. I'd although, also, although, although okay. I do have connections to pretty much every uh, intelligence agency on Earth, including the KGB. Yeah, as do I, um, because we got involved in this stuff. Well, the, a plan to start World War Three, which which... They are trying to uh, put into effect yeah. this year. Yeah. Fortunately, the Russian, Chinese, and American militaries have already agreed they're not going to be fooled into all-out warfare. So the plot, the plot is already falling apart. But we need to drive in the finishing blow. We need to remove these people from power. Let's start with making an example of George W. Bush Jr. And I say, let's start by putting the bums in jail. Thank you very much. This has been a public announcement uh, by uh, two of the several large revolutionary forces now trying to free humanity from the grips of a family mafia of mass murderers, bribers, and liars who have taken over the governments of most of the Western countries. And we're trying to create a world fascist totalitarian dictatorship. We want to set humanity free. Thank you.